Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Flare Power Bank from Cherry Mobile, 10,000 milliamp hour. Let's open it up and take a look. Inside the box you get the power bank itself and a charge cable. Let's take a look at the power bank. On the bottom you'll see it says 10,000 milliamp hour. It says output 5 volts 2 amp, input 5 volt 2 amp, which means it should charge really quickly. And of course we've got the Cherry Mobile brand name on the top. Now they have sold power banks before, but this is the first one they've actually branded under their own name. So the first thing you'll notice is it's got that kind of Zen phone look to it with the uh, stylized plastic on the top. It actually looks really nice. You've got two outputs, one input, and some status lights. You'll notice there's no power button, which is kind of annoying because there's no way to check how much power you've got left in the battery until you plug something in. Now before we go any further, I want to check if this is a true 10,000 milliamp hour battery. So what I've done is connected a USB watt meter, a dummy load, which I've set to one amp, and we'll just leave this and measure how much power we're able to consume. Now this can take a long time, so I'll pause the video and come back once it's finished. So the power bank has stopped outputting power and I've done a basic calculation to convert the milliamp hour rating to watt hours. The reason for that is the internal battery is 3.7 volts but we pull power out at 5 volts and that voltage could fluctuate a little bit. So 10,000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts, that's 37 watt hours. Let's see what we actually managed to pull out. So you can see we managed around 23.2 watt hours and we drew roughly one amp for four and a half hours so let me just make a note of that now straight off the bat you might be saying well 23.27 is nowhere near 37 and that's true normally you'd expect around a 10 percent loss in pulling the power out so we we should expect around 10 percent but let me work out what the exact percentage of this is Okay, well I used an online calculator and it works out to around 62.8%. That is a lot lower than what I would have expected. Let me make a note of that. So essentially, instead of getting 10,000 milliamp hour, we've actually got something like 6,200 milliamp hour. That is a long way off. Now I've done this measurement with so many power banks in the past. If you check my channel, you'll see I've done this many, many times. And this is probably the worst I've ever seen, except for those ones that just straight up lie. You know, the ones that say like, oh, it's 30,000 milliamp hour or something like that. The ones that are actually meant to be genuine, like I expected this to be, that is a really poor rating. 6,200 milliamp hour from something that sold as 10,000 milliamp hour. That's a little bit disappointing and very surprising. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, let's leave that and move on to some further tests. So now what I want to do is check if we can really charge this at 2 amp because I don't like power banks that charge slowly. They just take too long to charge. So let's see if we can really charge this at 2 amp. And I'm using the cable that they supplied with my own power supply. So let's zoom in on the watt meter and take a look. Well, that's great. Look at that. 5.1 volts, 1.97 amp. And if we swap to watts, you can see around 10 watts charging. So that's actually really good news. It does indeed have a true 2 amp input, so it will charge nice and fast. Now let's check if we can pull power out at the same time as it's charging. We just completely discharge this, and then we're going to add our load and see if we can pull out power while it's being charged. Okay, well I guess that gives our answer because there's basically just half a volt on the output. Let's switch to the other port. Yeah, there you go, there's no pass-through power. You cannot pull power out while it's being charged. That's a little bit unfortunate. Um, this is really starting to show its budget, <laughs> you know, the reason why it's being sold so cheap. It's not a true 10,000 milliamp hour. It doesn't have pass-through power, but it does have two amp input. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this to charge for a while, and then we'll come back and test how much power we can actually draw out of this, as well as how well it plays with Apple products. So I fully charged the power bank overnight, and now we're gonna test how much power we can actually draw out of this. First thing we're gonna try and do is charge another power bank. I know the one that we're trying to charge can draw two amps, so let's see if we can draw two amps out of here. Well, that's pretty impressive, 4.9 volts, 1.96 amp, 9.6 watts, nearly 10 watts. So we can conclude that it does have a true two amp output. Now we're gonna use our dummy load to see the maximum amount of power that we can pull out of one port. So let me zoom in on the watt meter. So I'll start to increase the load. We're at nearly one amp. Let's keep going. 1.6, let's keep going. We're at two amp, let's keep going. 2.1 amp, let's see if it's stable there. 
seems to be okay, the voltage is okay. Let's go a little bit higher. Seeing a little bit of voltage drop, but it's okay. For a uh, 2.2 amp, let's keep going. Oh, there you go. So at around 2.3 amp, it turned itself off. Now we're gonna test how much power we can draw from both USB ports at the same time. I've connected a one amp load here. It's currently drawing about 0.88 amp, and then we've got our adjustable load here. So let's see how much power we can draw out at the same time. So right now we've got one amp and 0.88 amp. So that would seem to indicate that you can draw out one amp on the USB ports at the same time, a total of roughly two amp. Let's go a bit higher. Okay, so as we approach 1.5 amp, you can see this one's reduced a little bit to 0.7. Let's go a little bit higher here. Oops, and there you go, it just turned off, so we must have drawn too much power. Okay, we're back in action. So again, we've got around 0.9 amp on this one. Let's try and increase our adjustable load. So we're now at 1 amp on this one, 0.9 on this one, so 1.9 amp total. Let's go a little bit higher. 1.2 amp and we've still got our 0.9 amp here 1.3 amp and we've still got our 1. Point, oh sorry our 0.9 here 1.4 amp and we're starting to see a tiny little drop on this one let's go a little bit higher okay is this going to be stable 1.5 amp and 0.7 yeah, you can see that it's just sharing the load. So basically, the total amount of power that you can draw out of this power bank is around 2.3 amp. Anything more than that, and it's gonna turn off. So you've got a combined total of 2.3 amp output. The next thing I wanna see is whether you can charge an Apple iPad at full speed, because you need some special resistors inside to work with Apple products. So let's see what happens. Okay, again, we have to unplug and then plug. Okay, so it's charging at just one amp, which means it doesn't have the special circuitry inside to work with Apple products. It will charge it, but it's limited to one amp, which really isn't that fast for an iPad. For the sake of comparison, let's try it with the Asus. Now these are almost identical in size. Let's try and see how the Asus does. So you can see that's charging at 1.7 amp. So I think that pretty much concludes our testing of the Flare power bank. It's not a true 10,000 milliamp hour, or at least not the one that I got. It was only 6,200, which isn't even close to what I'd expect. Um, the lack of a power button is really annoying. You have to keep unplugging and plugging stuff. There's no easy way to check how much power you've got left. You have to plug something in for it to initiate this. That's kind of annoying, but it does have two amp charging on the input so it will charge nice and fast so that is a big plus the output is okay it can handle 2 amp like we saw it handled 2 amp but the total output between these two is going to be 2.3 so that's not that high compared to some other power banks but then this is a budget power bank it's only 500 pesos so I could live with the 2.3 amp maximum output so the biggest thing that really makes this a thumbs down for me is the fact that they sell it as 10,000 but in our tests it was only 6,200. For me that's just not good enough. So if you enjoyed this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.